Well, welcome everybody to another episode of Exploring the Bible Together. Uh, we're doing a series on the Shema. Uh, this is the part two, and it's a word study uh, in that great uh, biblical uh, verse of Deuteronomy 4, I'm sorry, Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 5, um, that, that talks about, Hero Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, and how we're to love God. And today we're going to look at the word Lord. What is the name of God? You know, you read your Bible and you see the word Lord. Does God have a name? What is that name? How should, how should Christians use that name? And so we're going to watch a video today, and, uh, and then we're going to have a discussion with my colleagues here. I'm Pastor Jake Fain, along with... I'm Deacon Andrew Moore. And Pastor Paul Miller. We'll, have, we'll watch that video, have that discussion, and then explore a bit more on what is the name of God. For thousands of years, every morning and evening, Jewish people have prayed these well-known words as a way of expressing their devotion to God. They're called the Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. And as for you, you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your strength. We're going to look at the second key word here, Lord, written in all capital letters. This is the personal name of Israel's God. We first learn the meaning of this name in the story of Moses and the burning bush in the book of Exodus chapter 3. God appears to Moses and he commissions him to liberate the Israelites from slavery. And so Moses wonders, what if people ask the name of the God who has sent me? And so God responds, tell them Ehyeh has sent me to you. Now, that Hebrew word Ehye means I will be. In other words, God's name means that he is the one who is and who will be. God's existence doesn't depend on anyone or anything else. This God simply is. But it will sound kind of strange for Moses to go say to the Israelites, I will be has sent me to you. Only God can say, I will be. So in the next sentence, God tells Moses the version he should say aloud, Yahweh, the God of our ancestors, he has sent me to you. Now, that word Yahweh is the ancient Hebrew form of the verb he will be. And this is the personal name of the God of Israel. It appears over 6,500 times in the Old Testament. Now, here's what's interesting. Over the centuries, Israelites wanted to honor the sacred nature of this divine name. So, as they read the Hebrew Bible aloud and they came to this name, they stopped saying Yahweh and instead started saying the Hebrew word for Lord, which is Adonai. Now this practice has been continued throughout the centuries and so later when people started translating the Bible into English, they adopted the same practice. Instead of spelling out the divine name, they translated it as Lord spelled in all capital letters. Okay, you got that? Good, because there's more. Ancient Jewish scribes wanted to prevent anyone from even accidentally saying this name aloud when you read the Hebrew Bible. And so they came up with a visual device to remind you to make sure you say Adonai. They took the four consonant letters of the divine name. These letters correspond to our English letters Y-H-W-H. Then they inserted the three vowels from the word Adonai and combined these together to create an artificial hybrid word, which if you pronounced it, it would say Yahuwah, but no Israelite ever said Yahuwah. It's simply a visual reminder to say the word Adonai. Now, it gets more interesting. Much later, Christian scribes came along who didn't know that Yahuwah was an artificial word. And so they began to say it aloud and spell it in their writings. This is the word that eventually entered into English as Jehovah. It's a word many people still use today. But the main thing is the word Lord in all capital letters is an indication of the divine name. Don't confuse it with the word Lord in your English translations that's not in all capital letters. That is the actual Hebrew word Adon, which just means Lord or Master. This word can refer to people like kings or the master of a servant, even a shepherd over his sheep. And sometimes biblical authors will use this word to refer to God, like in the phrases, the Lord of all the earth or the Lord of Lords. But behind all of these words, Words, Yehovah, Lord, Adonai, stands the original divine name of the God of Israel. It refers to the one who was, who is, and who forever will be. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, great video. Uh, I tell you, this is one of those things that for me was incredibly eye-opening uh, when I went to seminary, when I began to understand the, the linguistic uh, meanings and nuances behind God's name 
And then the way that that moved forward from Hebrew and Greek and English and all the, the names and, you know, we hear Yahweh and Jehovah and, you know, all those, you know, different words and just hearing it laid out like this and, and presented and explained right from that point of starting with uh, God's conversation with Moses at the burning bush and then how that moved, you know, and they, you know, talk about throughout scripture, this is, this is the divine name. Um, so uh, great. I thought they did a great job of, of, of kind of making all that make sense and hang together and explain that. So uh, hopefully uh, you, you, you hear that in a way that's helpful for you. If only uh, Indiana Jones in the last crusade had seen this short video. I forget what it is. He has to spell God's name or something. Yeah. See, he, he'd, he'd have been, this would have seen him in good stead. So he's walking along those little rocks and he has to make sure he, the, the, the rocks all have Hebrew letters on them. Okay. That's he has, it. He says them in the right order, and then he he has to remember that there's no, you know, there, that there's no um, W in Hebrew, that it's the Vav or something like that, and and he has to J with, for Jehovah and Y. I don't know something. Yeah, Yod or yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> there you go. Uh, pop culture reference for you. The the thing with the Jehovah, and that's so helpful because you see all these different Bible translations. Like, where is this coming from? And um. The thing they didn't touch on that might have been helpful, I think, is that, you know, to take the vowels out of one word and the consonants out of another sounds a little crazy. But in Hebrew, you write the, um, you write the consonants, basically. And the vowels they added later, and they're dots above and below the dots and lines above and below the consonants. So that's why it would make sense for them to make different dots and lines, but keep the same consonants. Um, so it, in case that part sounded really odd, it makes a little bit more sense in Hebrew. I love the detail, though, because they had the Hebrew scribe writing from right to left. So if that bothered anybody, that's correct. That is how you write Hebrew. Yeah. So first time I, I sort of came across this concept, you know, even before seminary and all that was, you know, I'd get like emails and things and people would, you know, put like God and put G hyphen D. And I would what is that about? You know, why, why are they doing that? And, and that was just a holdover in terms of that Jewish tradition that the name of God has power. Uh, the name of God is sacred. Um, and, and, and we're to be respectful and whatnot uh, of that name. And so, you know, we, we can be very loose and casual in terms of how we use God's name. One of the commandments we know is do not take the Lord's name in vain. It's a big one. Uh, but I think there's some merit to thinking two things. One is God has a name, right? We, we worship this personal God who has a real name, right? Yahweh. Um, and, and there's a very personal encounter, right? In which God shows up with Moses and speaks to him one-on-one -on -one and has this relationship uh, and then the other side of it is God is also utterly transcendent, right? This is, this is the God, um, not just in the burning bush or on this one particular place, but it's the God of all things. And so there's this wondrous awesomeness, awestruck power of being in the presence of God and, and recognizing that name. And I think there's a good balance to strike in terms of what does it mean to call upon the name of the Lord, something that we we talk about regularly as people of faith, um, Lord, Lord, save me, Lord, help me. Um, what is that name that we're calling upon both this completely personal God invested in us and knows everything about us, but also this awesome transcendent God, King of the universe. Yeah. Go ahead. Hey, in, in, in the ancient world, there were lots of, right every culture had their own sets of gods and all those gods had names and there are lots of different gods lots of different names you know we think of the egyptian gods and the greek gods and the roman gods and you know all these other you know the babylonian gods. i mean everybody had gods and all of those gods had had names to be identified with and yet it's kind of like the difference between god small g and god capital g uh, this is God, not a God, not one of the gods, uh, not some kind of God, not a partial God, but this is 
God. This is the author, the creator of the universe. Um, and, and, and that name is a name that, that is actually instructive for us because the name itself, the, the, those four letters, they, they did a great job of explaining you know, how God gives Moses the divine name and then gives him a way to say it to other people. But that divine name really embodies the, the I, you know, I was, I am, and I always will be as God's name, you know, the eternal one. Uh, so many places that shows up in different forms in scripture, you know, the alpha and the omega, the one who was and is and is to come, you know, all the ways that we try to sort of put, you know, concepts and, and language to, to understand God better. Um, but at the, at the root, God just simply is God. I had a college professor who at some point early in the semester, and I, I think she probably did this often, but at some point would say to somebody, you know, did you think it was going to be easy to talk about God? Right? This is God we're talking about. Um, so in some sense, God is giving us a way to do what otherwise would be impossible, right? To give God's own name to us, to, to have a handle uh, for God is, um, you know, that's old slang term for a name, right? Your handle. Um, it gives us a way uh, to do this thing that would otherwise be impossible. Um, I think this video is helpful with a bunch of other parts of the Bible too, to understand that that sense as, as you started with Jake, that, that God's own name, God's name is holy. And so, you got to be careful what you do with it. We've got a commandment about that. Um, and so when you're reading in Isaiah, and, and Isaiah just says, the Holy One, it's a, way, it's a way not to say the name of God and also to say, well, there's only one who's holy. There's one from whom holiness comes. So you know who I mean. I can say the Holy One. Um, or um, the Apostle Paul often you know, he's, he, he, comes from the, he's, he comes from this Jewish culture that has a, a profound sense. So he often uses the passive tense um, or the passive mood, you know, like the one who. Is, he'll, it'll be a way to avoid saying the name of God too much, right? The one who calls into being the things that do not exist uh, or whatever. Um, he's just in the habit of not saying God's name more than he has to. And so occasionally that can lead to confusion in English where we're told, don't use the passive if you can help it. But, uh, uh, but he does. And, and it's to say, you know who I mean, right? Um, so yeah, I, I think I, my mind went to the commandment too. Uh, as Luther interprets the commandment, he says, on the one hand, we're not to misuse God's name. Uh, and that is, um, that's something I think as a preacher, I think about, uh, maybe not enough, but a good bit. And, um, and, and when we are witnessing, when we're sharing our faith, we do want to be careful what we say about God. Um, but on the other hand, and Luther always turns around and says, but God gave us this name that we might, right, call on God and that we might, you know, in prayer, praise and thanksgiving. Um, and I think, you know, speak of God by all means. This gives us that uh, ability to go and tell. Um, so, uh, you know, the people of Israel were always the people on whom God's name rests. And that is um, a little bit scary. What you do is going to reflect on God because you're a person on whom God's name rests. You know, and you have this name and you're not to misuse it, but it's also just powerful. Um, when uh, the priest Aaron is told to bless the people, God says, put my name on them and here's how you'll do it. Here's how you do it. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you. That familiar blessing is put my name on them. And that's what Aaron is to say. So all kinds of things with God's name and other scriptures as well. I think another element too is that names have power in the Bible. Um, there's a sense of, you know, you have some, you have something over them when you know the name. You notice these points in the Bible. When, when people are trying to figure out names, that they're trying to trying to get some intimacy and some some ownership over it. Um, so it's it's you know even in the very beginning when when Adam and Eve or, or Adam's made right and humanity's made and he gets to go and name everything right. There's there's a there's a power in being able to name things. And so when you get this, you know, what's your name, Lord? Uh, well, I am who I am. Kind of that great Popeye reference. I am who I am. Uh, <laughs> It's that sort of shifty, you can't exactly, you know, uh, 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 parcel down God to this one thing. God is beyond all that. And yet God still 
uh, offers his name to the people and, and puts his name. And even in baptism, right? I put my name upon you. I seal you. You, you belong to me. When we have that name, there's a power in that. Uh, even when we talk about calling, I mean, even when we end prayer, right? In the name of Jesus, we pray, right? Names have power. And God doesn't hoard that name or keep that name. God gives us that name. Uh, I, I think that's, that's incredibly generous and shows us the character of who God is to bestow that name upon us because names, once again, they have that power and God is always emptying that power and giving that power um, to God's people. And the other one, one other thing is um, Jesus in, in the Lord's prayer, how does he start? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So there's that holiness aspect again of how, how does even the, the perfect prayer start, the prayer that we're taught? It starts by honoring the name of God and everything else is ordered from there. All right. Well, you mentioned Jesus and I probably the most important connection in scripture is when Jesus says, I am or I am the vine or I am the good shepherd, he isn't just making a, um, he isn't just making a, a metaphorical statement, right? To use that word, I am, I am, I am, that's the divine name. So when they're, you know, out in the storm and they think they're going to die and then they see someone walking on the water and they said, they say, is it you? And he says, I am, right? That's not just, yep, it's me. Um, so uh, yeah, that, to know, to know that that is, I mean, it's, uh, it's a name and it's not a name, right? The one who is, the one who is, but it's the name that God's given us. And then we recognize that Jesus. And then because of this long tradition of using the word Lord, people can call him Lord and mean more than just sir or mister, which uh, that word also kind of means, but, but it means we understand you are the Lord, um, the Lord that we've known um, through God's relationship through Israel through the centuries. So uh, all kind of resonance there in the Gospels also. All right. Some of the Good. who've been going through the Gospel of John, um, right? We're, we're in the Easter season at the time of our recording this particular video. And so we've been hitting some of those I am names. I am the Good Shepherd and I am the Vine. You know, there's seven different I am statements by Jesus in the Gospel of John. So if you want to find out where does Jesus say I am, what, you know, whatever, go to the Gospel of John. And uh, you'll find those there and some other ones as well. But that's, that's the place where it really does show up. And again, it ties back into that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Jesus mm. says, I am. Mm. Well, this is great. Should we uh, wrap this one? We, now we get to move into the, the, the second verse. Um, and in the, in the next ones, uh, our next, uh, videos so deuteronomy 6 verse 5 love the lord your god and we go on from there um so uh but let's close with prayer gracious god eternal one holy one you have given us the privilege of bearing your name of speaking your name of calling upon you uh in times of need in times of joy uh, god we thank you um, for the honor that you've given us, for the, uh, for the responsibility it is to bear your name. Um, God, as we, as we learn to hear, to listen, um, uh, and now to begin to speak and to respond, uh, we ask that you would uh, be at work in us, um, drawing us close to you in this intimacy with which you have uh, blessed us and, and, and reached out to us. Uh, God, that we might be shaped into, into people who, uh, who not, only bear your, uh, not only bear your name, but share it uh, as well. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Thanks for joining in.